In this video, I want to show you guys a principle called the Fresnel effect and how it can make for uh, better lighting, more depth, and just overall more realistic lighting. And it's going to be a very technical tutorial by my standards, so uh, bear with me and hopefully you guys will learn something. So check it out. All right, welcome. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and digital artist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So I was watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 the other day for the third or fourth time, and I noticed something in this scene, and I realized that I wanted to do a video on this, and it's, it's pretty technical relative to the sort of stuff that I normally do here, so bear with me. I'm going to give you a couple of different examples, because I know everyone sort of learns different ways, and uh, hopefully you guys will... Uh, find this as neat as I did and it really felt sort of like a light bulb for me a couple of months ago and, and I thought this scene would be an excellent example of uh, of how this can be used in digital art so in this in this scene in Guardians of the Galaxy they do a like a they, they freeze the image so you know Groot's dancing around or he's about to start dancing and it freezes and then it does this sort of pan around him all right and if Premiere will cooperate, there we go. So it does this pan and everything's frozen, okay? So nothing's moving. But one thing that I notice, if you look at Groot's head, for example, and especially uh, like this green light that's, that's shining from this over here, it appears brighter here. And in this side of his face is in shadow. And as we swing it around, you'll notice that what we're looking at on the right side, I'm talking about this highlight right here, this highlight actually appears, okay? Now, the light itself's not moving, okay? And nothing in the scene is moving, only the viewer's eye moved, the camera moved, the virtual camera in this case. And another example that you'll see in this scene is if you look at this little highlight on his eye, right? So his eye is very reflective, obviously. And you can see the reflection of the sign in his eye. But as we swing around, if you look closely, when we get to out right here, it disappears. Okay? Now, the light didn't turn off. He still lit green everywhere else. But that, that reflective, that specular highlight on his eye is no longer there. When we're deciding where we're going to light things and where we're going to add light to a figure... We have to take into account, obviously, where that light source is, but you also have to take into account where the viewer's eye is. Um, you can also see this, like I said, in the on the right side of his face. You've got that light that appears, that highlight, that sort of pops into view right here. So what is that, right? I was looking at this, and I'm like, well, that's, it looks realistic, but what's happening? And it's called the Fresnel effect. And I've, I've got some stuff here in Photoshop that I want to use as a way to kind of explain this. So, and this is not the greatest illustration in the world, so apologies. But what, what we're seeing here, let me make a new layer on top so I can draw. And what we're seeing here is we've just got a room. Now this is a mirror, okay? Take my word for it, it's a mirror. And we've got a light source over here. We've got a guy, blue guy over here, an orange guy over here. When we're looking at Groot's face, for example, okay, this this plane of light that appears on the side of his head, you know, it's showing up because of that explosion that's happening behind him. And the reason it happens is, so if we're in this guy's position, okay, or the orange guy's position, we're not going to see the reflection of this light bulb. We're not going to be able to see this lamp over here in the mirror. Okay, we've pretty much got his view and, you know, light's being thrown everywhere, but I can't see this lamp in the mirror, right? Because it's not reflecting in that direction. You know, the light is coming across here and then, you know, it's bouncing out this way. But if I'm the blue guy, now I'm, I'm the same distance from the floor here, I'm going to see this light in the mirror, okay? This is just how the physics works there. So if I'm standing there, I'm looking at the mirror, I'm going to see an actual reflection. I'm going to see the lamp here, and I'm also going to see a reflection in the mirror here. And it might help to understand this looking at it from the top. So again, here's my great drawing. Here's our blue guy. Here's our orange guy. Here's our light source, and here's the mirror. 
Again, take my word for it. So the light's being thrown around all over the place, but it's only being reflected back to this viewer at this angle. Okay, so the guy in blue is actually getting a, a very strong reflection. He's almost like he's looking at two light sources. You know, he's looking at the light source, and then he's got the light source in the mirror. But this guy is not seeing that. Okay, he's not seeing that reflection. Okay, now light's getting thrown around all over the place, and he can see the mirror. But in order for him to be able to see the light itself, we'd have to move it. You know, right next to him, pretty much. So you've got this line of sight doing this back to him. Okay, so what's happening in this image? is that the light is coming from the explosion behind him, reflecting off of Groot's head and then bouncing right into our eyeballs as, as viewers. And that's the reason why when we swing this uh, back around to here, it changes because the light is coming in and the strongest reflection of that is actually, you know, going to be a different angle. Okay. And so if you think of that surface as like a mirror, that's why we're getting that, that, brighter, that brighter light there. And another way to think about this would be like a pool table. And I think I've used this example before, uh, but I, I have a better understanding myself of this now. So if I'm deciding where I want to light something, what I'm really doing is think about it like shooting a, like a like pool or billiards, whatever you want to call it. You know, if, if I need to color this wall and I want to put a specular highlight on that wall, where does it go? Now, obviously, felt on a pool table is not extremely reflective, but let's say that it was. How would, and let's say I'm looking in this direction. You know, how, how would I determine where that goes? So it's just like shooting uh, a pool ball. So I would try to find the angle that gets me this okay so I'm gonna shoot the the blue ball here into this yellow ball let's say that's my light source there is where my specular highlights going to go so that that's how it makes sense to me I'm a very like spatial type thinker and so for me I tend to look at it in in those angles and so here's a, a practical example I'm gonna give you here Again, crew drawing of a guy here that is facing a light bulb, and I made it smaller because it's, you know, it's further away from him, okay? And in this shot, it's basically the same thing, except, you know, think of this as, you know, in this case where let's say this guy is four feet from us and the light bulb is eight feet from us. And here, they're on the same plane, okay? So you've got a, a guy standing here and then right next to him, you've got another light bulb. Let's say it's equidistant from, from us in both cases. Let's say that I'm going to throw some highlights around on this guy's face. So I'm going to get a little bit brighter and add a little bit of yellow. And let me just get a brush here. And I'm going to do this really simple and rough, but you know, it's going to get over here and it's going to be able to cover the front of his face. And you might catch a little edge of the ear there. I got this square brush I'm using, but you might catch a little bit of ear and maybe some on the skin down here. Okay. And that's going to kind of fade because the next round. Now, let's say that that's the color I'm going to go with for this light on this guy at this angle. But this is the same scene. The light source is in the same place. But on the above example, we can start with that same color, basically. And we're going to see it about like this angle, right? But it's going to be brighter. Okay, it's going to be brighter at this angle because of what I just showed you. So it's, think about his face as being that mirror, okay? From here, we're not really getting any direct reflections. You know, we're just seeing where the light's hitting, but it's not, mu not much of it is reflecting back to us. You know, there might be, uh, you know, a really subtle, you know, small spot maybe on his cheek or something, but, you know, on the tip of his nose, you might get a little bit. But here, you've got this plane along the side of his face. So this is all going to be brighter, <laughs> not black. Let me get into the color. So this is all actually going to be, let me just do this. It's going to be brighter because again, it's almost like that, the mirror scenario where we're getting a direct reflection off that mirror. And, and actually, even if you look at, if you want another example of like how this sort of works in real life, 
if you look at my video, okay, so you guys' eyes are the camera, my webcam in this case, you can actually see the reflection of this light over here to my left in the in the guitar behind me. So, you know, a really smart person could probably do the math and figure out almost exactly, you know, where that light is in the room based on the angle of that reflection. Um, you can even see this on like the, uh, on my hand, and you'll see that as I turn it, it's actually getting a little bit brighter as I turn it. And that's not because from the light on the left, that's from the ceiling light that's over my head. Because at this angle, it's bouncing just like it is off that mirror directly into the camera. But as I turn it a little bit, I'm changing the angle. I'm not seeing that same reflection anymore. So I hope this is making sense. Like I said, this is about as technical as I usually get on this channel. So this is the first tutorial you've ever watched. You know, you're thinking, oh my God, this guy is uh, talking over my head. It's usually not like this. <laughs> so um, I want to show you guys another example in the movie. And I, this has sort of became almost a game to me in the last couple of weeks. Is I've been I've been looking for this effect in different places, and it it really gave me a much more solid understanding of how you know where to place specular highlights and where highlights go in general. Um, you can see in this scene, you guys can see this, right? It's a little bit dark, but as as, as their heads moving around, you see this white, really very broad light here. You can almost see the shape of it. Like I feel like that's one of those big rectangular. Is it a softbox? I don't know. Some photographer or videographer is gonna correct me or umbrella or something. But you can almost see the shape of it. Like it, that, that kind of rectangular shape. You know, we're we're you know this isn't necessarily the Fresnel effect, but it's but it's showing us where the light in in the scene would be. You know, so it's bouncing from the camera off her forehead and over here kind of behind us to the right a little bit, you know. And there's also, there's a little bit of reflection you can see on the like, bottom of her chin also. I don't know if that's a different, probably a different light. I don't think the reflection on her jacket would be strong enough to do that. So there's probably two lights happening there. Now, I'm going to zoom ahead here. She's All right, this is the scene I want to show you. So we've got a scene here where she's looking at us. And you can see how bright this side of her face is. Okay, again, if you think about skin, it's very reflective, more so than most materials like my shirt and things like that. So if you think about where we are, where the camera is currently, we can again kind of interpolate that is as we go straight from the camera to her cheek and bounce that off just like we did at the pool table, you know, we're going to get a light source, you know, over here somewhere. But you'll notice that we don't see that much brightness at this angle. You know, I don't think they changed the lighting in this scene uh, because you can see a little bit of it here on the side of her, uh, uh, her her jawline here. It's a little bit brighter there because, you know, there's a light that's reflecting from that. But as we jump back to the other angle, you'll see that it looks brighter again. So, so whenever you are lighting something, uh, not only do you have to think about where the light source is, but you also want to think about how it's reflecting back to the camera. And that is going to change, as you guys can see, like her face looks much uh, brighter there than it does here, even though it's the same light. Okay. And, excuse me, my, my voice is a little harsh because pain medicine I'm on dries me out and I'm coming off of it right now. So um, I had shoulder surgery a couple weeks ago, if you don't follow this channel regularly. And uh, I gave an example of this here, like in an actual comic. Now, I, I threw around a good bit of that kind of blue reflected light in all the shadows because, you know, the sky is blue and it's going to light all the darker areas. But you can see this especially right here in this area. Let me do this. This little edge right along here. So it actually gives us a legitimate reason to have what is basically a rim light you know rim lights are not quite you know they use some of the same principles but they're usually just along the edges but you guys can kind of see you know in this comic you know it looks fine without that particular light there but when you add it in it just makes it a lot it creates a lot more depth and it makes it a little bit more realistic so uh, like I said I know this video is is probably 
not what you guys are accustomed to, and I hope you don't mind. I had a lot of fun trying to put this together. And um, so, yeah, if you want more of this sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as I said earlier, uh, be sure to check out the link for uh, Instagram TV. I've just started a, a channel on there as well. Um, it's going to be really short, you know, probably three, four, five minute little videos because it's really designed for a mobile experience. I'm not really going to be doing tutorials on there necessarily other than maybe a quick tip or something here and there. Uh, but uh, I'll answer YouTube comments and things like that. I just wanted a way to communicate with you guys that isn't necessarily, you know, recording a big video and editing it, editing it and putting it all together and all that stuff, which can be very time consuming when sometimes I just want to get something out there. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> apologies, losing my voice. But, um, so yeah, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have questions, be sure to leave those in the comments and I'll be sure to get to those. And if this was way over your head and you want more fundamentals, uh, check the link in the description again for I've got art courses on all sorts of different things now. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.